This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And I have a confession to make. I have never seen The Witches. Oh, wait, that's not that bad. I know I've talked about it time and time again on this show, but I've never actually seen it all the way through. You really don't give a shit. But with the remake coming out this year, I insist that you torture me any way you see fit! Well, that we can do. <laughs> Robert Zemeckis laid his cry of, please let me do something. It only figures to finally look over the beloved dark fantasy from 1990. You see, when I was young, I wasn't allowed to see it because it was said to be too scary, which like any kid, encouraged me to see it more. So I went to a friend who had it, but we didn't have time to watch the whole thing, so I simply said, show me all the scary scenes. And the few segments I saw did not disappoint. Now, exactly 30 years later, I guess it only makes sense to watch the movie that came with those scenes. The film has a ton of talent associated with dark storytelling. The director of the classic Don't Look Now, Nicholas Rogue. Producer Jim Henson, who has plenty of creepy shit in his arsenal. And of course, the beloved children's author who said, Fuck your bedtime story, your pants need some shitting. That's obviously a great combo, I guess I'm just saying, don't plan on me explaining the impact this had on tons of kids. As I'll be experiencing that impact here today. But I do know a lot of people love how messed up it is, so it only makes sense to check out why. Let's see why everyone went, ah oh, shit, before they went, ah oh, shit. This is The Witches. We get a really long opening shot flying over these snowy hills. So naturally, this takes place during a particularly warm fall. Witches spend their time plotting to kill children. Sounds like one of the nicer openings to a road doll story. This is Lou, played by Jason Fisher, who listens to stories from his grandmother because if his parents aren't dead yet, they soon will be. I travel the world in search for the Grand High Witch. And I'm instantly not gonna miss them because this grandma is awesome. She tells the story about a girl named Erica who was nabbed by witches when she was a child. Her father is terrified to find somehow her image has made its way onto the painting in their house. The peculiar thing was that little Erica kept on changing her position. Did you see her moving in the picture? No, that effect would be too expensive. The girl grows older in the picture until one day she vanishes. Presumably dying, or as someone snuck paint thinner into her coffee. I do hope this is referenced later for two seconds and then never brought up again. Everything all right, Mother? Very all right. Goodbye, Mom. Uh, good night, son. Good night, Dad. I'll see you at the funeral. She tells Luke how witches hate the smell of clean children, but a dirty child is an invisible scent. To a witch you would smell absolutely disgusting. What kind of disgusting? Christ, I'm saying lay off the Chipotle, all right? The next morning, Luke gets an unpleasant surprise. Mom? Dad? Oh, God. Put a search out for all runaway rhinos. Roevesham? I'm afraid I have some bad news. I have what's left of Luke's mother in this scarf. Martha Stewart said delivering big news should always be like I'm wrapping a present. Come here to me. Sit on my lap, all right? Grandma tells Luke about his parents' death and decides to go home with her to England. With such a heavy scene for children to watch, let's lighten the mood. I've got something for you here. Something I think you'll like. <gasps> I just wanted to give you this. Well, that was like going from child's play to the good son. It's lighter, but is it? 
Perhaps you'd like some chocolate? Here you are, a big bar of chocolate. Fresh from Willy Wonka's torture tunnel, this one has extra feline and rodent. Luke, it's dinner time! His grandma scares her away and gives Luke his birthday gift. But soon after, she passes out. Your granny has a very mild case of diabetes. Either that or it's a witch's hex. If she does any strange things with a crucifix, let me know. Like what? You'll know. I'm sorry for spoiling your birthday for you. And for giving you a fright. Is it alright if I put with William and Mary now? After you give them more creative names than that, who raised you, paper? When Grandma gets better, we're going with her to a hotel by the ocean. Well, I'll tell you, it's big. <laughs> It's the welcoming warmth I love about this movie. They do eventually make their way to that hotel, but a nasty customer named Miss Ernst, played by Angelica Houston, checks in as well. Ah, Miss Ernst, I am the owner of the hotel. Too many Americans kept confusing me for John Cleese, so screw it, I'm just playing Basil Fawlty. The raisins were all around the edge of these cakes. Luke meets a kid named Bruno, who's obsessed with food because, you know, fat! Oh, you've got those excellent cakes again! Except when they use margarine instead of butter. Eating is the only identity for large kids in Roald Dahl books. My god, Mr. Bean and Benny Hill in the same room! Oh, sorry, my mix-up. Like I said, Americans confuse Atkins and Cleese all the time. Luke knows he'll get in trouble if his mice are spotted, so he hides in an empty room that's soon to become very filled. <laughs> Yeah, I knew it. This is a Rocky Horror screening. Hey, Mom! Your shoes! Sweet, this is totally my thing. Uh, was my thing. <laughs> this is what happens when you get the effects guys from Aliens to do your cute little kids movie. No joke, these effects are as spectacular now as they were when they first premiered. Well, okay, that's a little obvious. Sure, that could be blended a little better. Okay, a lot of it could be blended better. It's a little disturbing her chin looks like Mr. Burns' ball sack and... I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of all the kids traumatized because their parents thought this was the same kind of PG as Inside Out and... By God, I gotta give a standing ovation to this! My orders are... Every child should be rubbed out! Ah... <sighs> Do I make myself clear? Not sure if they put guys as witches because it's a progressive coven or they just wanted to save on bald makeup. We can't possibly wipe out all of them. You dare to argue with me? <laughs> that sounded like someone's eyes lasering someone to death. And resign from your jobs. Hey, remember when Jennifer Lawrence complained about being in that mystique makeup? This scene is over 10 minutes long, and Houston is stuck in that shit for guaranteed most of the shooting day. And she must have taken Doug Jones' meditation classes because you never know she was uncomfortable given her performance. <laughs> she reveals her plan for the witches to purchase candy stores and lace all the sweets with a potion to turn all the children into mice. In fact, their first subject, Bruno, is about to be their literal test mouse. Because fat! That lady promised me six whole bars of chocolate. I've come to collect. When the title little puke thought about working online? <laughs> <laughs> My death is hilarious! Jesus, it's like Fifle the Mouse after a meth highball. I don't care if this came out in 90, this is an honorary 80s shit your pants film. He's transformed into a mouse and Lucas discovered shortly after. <laughs> Tables, which is natural enemy. And small stone fences. You know, they're becoming less threatening the more they're on screen. This movie's friendly enough. Let's throw an attempted baby murder on top of everything. <laughs> Baby in a friend. Oh. Guess it is pretty funny. Luke saves the baby and eventually escapes, but he discovers Miss Ernst has poisoned his grandma. They capture Luke and force him to take the potion, turning him into a mouse. And with Jim Henson's brilliant puppetry, I'm sure you can't tell the difference between that and the real thing. <laughs> Still looks better than CG. 
Luke escapes from the witches and meets up with Bruno, who even when he's not fat, has the personality of fat. Are you okay? They didn't give me the six bars of chocolate they promised. Clearly, my biggest concern. If it's a problem I can't eat, it doesn't exist. mouse puppets are a little wonky, the close-up ones are really damn good. Now, I'm sure this is because they can have more detail and control, but when it's far away, it does kind of look like unfinished animatronics for Carousel of Progress. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow, just a dream away. Faster! Faster! Ooh, I forgot my tail! Ooh. I think we were all expecting that to go in a different direction. They stumble across the hotel manager sharing his black adder. And they sneak into Luke's grandma's room who's feeling better. Oh my darling Luke, what have they done to you? They, they turned me into a mouse. I thought that would be obvious. They leave tomorrow with a bundle of money. Uh, down here, grandma. The mouse with the green outline that would have been keyed better if there wasn't a green book in the shot. But I'd like to say hello to a fellow philanthropist. You collect stamps. I love that the villain hates children so much she literally can't say it without almost vomiting. You give money for the little... Children. They also give money for the little... I hope to hate something that bad. I'll get there. If I could get the formula into their food... Do even the wall decorations have to be scary? It's like a baby being born through a ravioli's vagina. Who am I kidding? Rodal will approve. Be careful. I will, I will. He finds one of the potions, but the witches come in, literally putting on their faces. All right, let them in. If you're like me, you rewound that scene a million times to figure out how they did that effect. If I had to guess, I'd say she just dropped the mask while the other woman passed by, but Jesus, what perfect timing. Both these actresses must have been like, Christ, we should be surgeons if that was such a smooth operation. <gasps> Luke gets out and tries to sneak past without getting noticed. Now the question is, what you like to work Mmm, <sighs> let's play the more realistic take. <laughs> they decide to sneak the potion into the witch's dinner to turn them all into mice. The grandma finds Bruno's parents and tries delicately to tell them what happened. He is here already. Your son has suffered a mishap. He has been drastically altered. His head is next to my lipstick, and unless you want a shorter casket at his funeral, you'll do as I say. Again, Roald Dahl, tell me you couldn't see that in this! The witches turn him into a mouse. You crackers. Hey, that is our word! She tries her best to convince him, but they don't listen. Meanwhile, one of the maids sees the potion and mistakes it for perfume. <laughs> Furries have already written five stories about what this does to her. Luke and Bruno get separated in the kitchen and try to avoid getting separated in the kitchen. <gasps> now you know the secret ingredient for McDonald's fries. It was never a secret. Chef! Chef! Ooh, and we also see how their fish fillet is made. He dumps the potion into the soup. Um, Ratatouille exists, as the hotel owner tries to figure out when he can make the bed with the maid again. Uh, I may be a little late. What a coincidence, so am I. She notices mouse fur on her neck. Get ready for that never to come back. Well, a real mouse is- Christ! Phew, I gotta get out of here. Oh, he's just ignoring how his tail was clearly severed in that scene? Phew, I gotta get out of here. Oh, and I forget to mention- Sweet God, I've never been in more pain! Give me five centimeters of morphine stat! Well, I'll be damned. Carson really did have humble beginnings. Oh, if only I could blame this on Mr. Mosley. Who's that in? The witch who made the soup turns into a mouse herself and tries to warn the others. Don't touch Ow! the soup! Child! Wow, you are mean! All the witches are given the soup and start to transform.
You saw it too. You're doing fiber! You! <laughs> I guess he saw an opportunity and took it? Once again, we get some really awesome effects with the mouse transformations, and Grandma traps Miss Ern. Oh, don't worry, kids. She's just gonna be chopped in half with a cleaver. <laughs> oh, original PG. Never let me go. Grandma and Luke head back home, but Luke mails himself all the money the witches were gonna use to open the candy shops. It was the Grand High Witches, and it has the name and address of every witch in America. I hope we have time to take on those American witches. No, I smell a movie spinoff. But the witch that was always left out of the group turns Luke back to the way he was to show her appreciation. Don't thank her, young man. Thank the test audience that couldn't handle the original ending. <laughs> <laughs> but why do I still have the hots for Gadget from Rescue Rangers? Kill Bruno? Got it! There's an Orca Man about to look like the Terminator for him! <laughs> and that was The Witches. It's mean, dark, and would scare the shit out of your children, so of course I like it. I'll admit the parts where their mice aren't as interesting as everything else. Maybe because Luke is not exactly the most intriguing character as a human or a rodent. But it did allow for some good puppetry and some cool angles at times. Everything else, though, is a lot of twisted fun. Every actor is perfectly over the top, the humor is delightfully harsh, and the visuals are so creative, clearly taking a ton of time and effort to create. It's honestly just as good as I was hoping it would be, being aggressive and demented while also still having a lot of charm and comedy. I guess it is a little disjointed when you think about how many plot elements don't have much of a payoff, but the payoffs they do have are just too awesome to overlook. Zemeckis has a tough act to follow, man, because this is just the right amount of cheesy horror a movie like this deserves. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Baby, enough for 